now let me discuss about the class 1a agents remember class 1a agents apart from its action on the sodium channels so what do they do for the sodium channels they block the sodium channels apart from its action on the sodium channels these drugs also block the cardiac potassium channels okay so these class 1a agents apart from blocking right apart from blocking the sodium channels right these class 1a agents they also block right they also block the cardiac potassium channels right they also block the cardiac potassium channels now the sodium channels were concerned with your phase zero of action potential whereas you take the potassium channels the potassium channels they were concerned with the repolarization of the action potential so if the potassium channels once they are open the potassium which is there within the cell will move out of the cell and thereby the cell will start repolarizing but here what is happening these class 1a agents they are blocking the cardiac potassium channels so once there is blocking of the cardiac potassium channels there is delay in the repolarization so so once there is blocking of the cardiac potassium channels thus they will cause delaying of the repolarization so there is right so there is delaying repolarization now so once the repolarization is delayed what will happen there will be a prolonged action potential duration so this will result in right this will result in a prolonged action potential duration so what i want to tell you here is with class 1a agents the cardiac action potential duration increases right this is a very important multiple choice question here now due to prolongation of the action potential duration right due to prolongation of the action potential duration these drugs can precipitate the torsades d pointers i'll tell you what is torsades d pointers okay so due to prolongation of the action potential duration these drugs right these drugs can precipitate these drugs can precipitate torsades d pointers right these drugs can precipitate the torsades d pointers now what exactly will happen here now why there is action potential duration increased i mean what does that represent in the ecg remember prolonged action potential duration in the ecg it is represented by a prolonged qt interval right it is represented by a prolonged qt interval now if you take the normal qt interval the normal qt interval is around 360 to 440 milliseconds right and sometimes it may extend even up to 460 milliseconds okay so if you take the normal qt interval so in this normal qt interval this might be up to 360 to 440 milliseconds some individuals it may even be 460 milliseconds as well now whenever you are using these drugs what are these drugs doing they are blocking even your repolarization and thereby the action potential duration is increased and this increased action potential duration is represented on the ecg by your prolonged qt interval by your prolonged qt interval so remember whenever there is a prolonged qt interval that will precipitate and these individuals they have risk of developing arrhythmias right now what is your torsades d pointers this torsades d pointers this is your 
a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia right it is a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia it's a type of arrhythmia right and so remember those particular drugs which will increase the qt interval they have the risk of tendency of developing torsades depointes torsades depointes it is a type of arrhythmia and what arrhythmia is that it is a polymorphic that means the individual has ventricular tachycardia of variable morphology that is what is called as polymorphic ventricular tachycardia all right next let me tell you the agents in this class they also cause decrease in the conductivity of the impulse and they will also increase the refractoriness of the cardiac cell okay so right so the agents in this class they will also cause right they will also cause decreased conductivity of the impulse and not only that these agents they will also cause increased refractoriness of the cardiac cell right they will also cause increased refractoriness of the cardiac cell now you take the decreased conductivity right why there is decreased conductivity because the action potential duration is prolonged so once the action potential duration is prolonged for the next cell to get depolarized the previous cell action potential duration should be completed and then the next cell will be depolarized but what is happening to your previous cell to the previous cell the action potential duration is increased that is the reason why the subsequent cell for its depolarization it takes a prolonged period so so the subsequent depolarization will be delayed and that is the reason why there is decreased conductivity by your class 1a agents now what do you mean by the word refractoriness refractoriness means refractory period is that particular period during which the second stimulus will not stimulate the cell when the cell is in the phase of depolarization right what is refractory period when the cell is in the state of depolarization during this particular phase if the cell receive second stimulus it will not respond to the second stimulus that is what is called as refractory period now because the action potential duration is prolonged the cell will try to be more in the refractory period so that is what is called as these drugs they will increase the refractoriness of the cardiac cells now now the other points if you see remember these drugs dissociate from the sodium channels with intermediate kinetics right so the pharmacokinetics here is it is the intermediate kinetics right they dissociate from the sodium channels with intermediate kinetics now the other point is you take the time of recovery the time of recovery of the sodium channels is 1 to 10 milliseconds right the time of recovery right the time of recovery of this particular sodium channels is around 1 to 10 milliseconds right it is around 1 to 10 milliseconds now what are the examples of your class 1a agents the drugs include quinidine then you have procainamide right then you have procainamide and then you have another important drug that is disopiramide right then you have another important drug that is disopiramide so quinidine procainamide and disopiramide these are the important members of your class 1a agents now first let me discuss about the quinidine so before going into the further discussion about the quinidine let me shortly revise here remember class 1a agents apart from blocking the sodium channels they also block the cardiac potassium channels and thereby delaying the repolarization resulting in prolonged action potential duration so due to prolongation of the action potential duration these drugs can precipitate what is called as the torsades depointes and that is what is represented on the ecg by your prolonged qt interval 
and you take the normal QT interval that is around 360 to 440 milliseconds and what is your torsade Z point is it is nothing but it's a form of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia next agents in this class also cause decreased conductivity and increased refractoriness next these drugs dissociate from the sodium channels with intermediate kinetics and the time of recovery of the sodium channels is around 1 to 10 milliseconds and if you take the drugs in your class 1a agents they include quinidine procainamide and disopidamide they are the important members of the class 1a agents